We want to finish, by God's grace, what we started last Sunday. For those of you who are not here on Sunday, I want to call you to go back to our YouTube channel, Deliverance Church Zimmerman. You can catch that part one there of Unlikely Treasure. If you are here, then you know what we are just about to get into. We just want to try and finish it by the grace of God. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5 to 10. If you're here, you're a visitor. Karibu sana. My name is Brian Moshigadi. I'm born again in Jesus Christ is Lord. I am glad to be here today. It's having God and his people here at the DCIKZ under Bishop Dr. Jimmy and Pastor Alice Kimani, who is in the house. And we bless the Lord for them. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5 to 10. We're reading in the New King James um, translation. And it says, For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves bond servants for Jesus' sake. For it is God, it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Let me take that line again. That it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who himself has shown in our hearts. Taking us back to the creation story. When God was creating, he said, let there be light, and there was light. That same God that commanded light to shine out of darkness, that same God. You see, the Bible says in the beginning, the earth was dark, it was formless, it was void. There was nothingness. Then out of that darkness, God said, let there be light. It says, that same God has commanded, who commanded light to shine out of darkness, himself did not stop there. He decided to become that light personified. What did he do? He left where he was and came to step. He himself has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. That's a long statement. Let me try and break it down. It says he himself, that one who did that great creation, work of creation, has himself now shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Okay? What he, the reason, that too, is the reason that he has, he himself come to shine in our hearts. Remember the Bible referring to Jesus Christ as the light of the world. Is that John chapter 8 verse 12? He says, I am the light of the world. If anyone walks in me, they will not be caught in darkness. That same one, that light has shone in our hearts so that he can give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Just to reveal to us the knowledge of the glory of God, that we may know the glory of God. That's what knowledge is, essentially, in the face of Jesus Christ. Then, just to turn things a little bit, it says, but we have this treasure, verse 7, in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We have this treasure in earthen vessels, so that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. If the, if the treasure had been put in golden vessels, in angelic vessels, then there wouldn't be much. People would look at it and think, ah, they, they, they wouldn't see. But the fact that God has seen to it that this treasure is put in earthen vessels like you and I is so that anybody looking at you and I living a life other than the ordinary fallen state of man would know that there is something deeper here. They would come to inquire. It would be a thing of people wanting to just know what's going on here. That's how salvation works. You, an ordinary man, you, an ordinary lady, you have been saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. You know, you have been saved by, uh -huh, by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, not by works, lest any of us would boast. We have been saved by the very grace of God. What does that mean? That God looked at you. And even though you and I were deserving of punishment, the worst, in fact, punishment by hanging on a cross, even though that would be the case, he has looked at you and said, no, let's do things a bit different. Let me, let me save you. Let me bring you in. Let me, in fact, make you an heir with Jesus Christ. Now, as you live that God kind of life, 
the abundant kind of life. As you live that life in Jesus Christ, other people looking at you in the earth are looking and they're wondering, huh, there's something different about this person. When someone steps on you in the morning in the matatu in the mud like this, and the first thing out of your mouth is not a sentence of expletives. Even though they say not, you look at them, you give them the eye, but because of God, you just simmer down. That person looks at you, and they may not ask questions, but they will wonder, huh, that, that, beloved, you see many times we might think that it has to become a big discussion. Lazima akuliza, wow, ni aja uja nitukana, so that ndi ujue kitu imetendeka. No, just that, ha, huh, that thought provocation in them, put together with another thought provocation with another person, and another one, and another one, many believers across Nairobi, for instance, by the time they are getting to the house in the evening, those many thoughts provoked, are like, there's something about this generation, there's something different. And then it happens another day, and another day, and another day, and another day, and another day. And they realize it's not everybody who acts like that, but there are people who act like that. And those people are called Christians. They are Christ-like. And they realize this seems to be a lighter kind of life. What must I do to get that? That's how we win souls. Using our words, yes, but also using our life. Remember, we talked about this looking at blessed is the man, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Is it? Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind that you do not become so well adjusted to this culture of life that you fit into it without even thinking about it. That people looking at you living a different kind of life are like, ha, ah, there's something there. They might not ask you, but one day, one day they will find someone to ask, and oh, glorious day. That work has already been done, been done inside of them. You see, if you, if you go to sell Bitcoin, for instance, to someone, those things that people don't understand. Is a, is a cryptocurrency. Those things. I don't think there's anything that is so cryptic. No wonder it's called cryptocurrency. It's so cryptic. You try to explain to somebody, they're like, Ati buanza kutoka from the beginning, naanza kutengineza pesa aje. Ambia, so unachukua hizi manini? Hizi ma coins? So, okay, so unaiza nikaenda mpesa, nizi itisha. Ambia, zi, 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 zi. Unaziweka, zina grow, unambia sijui anga Ethereum. Okay, like, eh? Okay, Rudy Mbele, tena, tuanze, tuanze, sasa, for real, for real. It's so cryptic, you don't understand it. But the reason that some of us would get into it is that you have seen somebody, you see how they sell it to you, is that they come and they tell you, me, I put in this amount. This is what I have. Honor. Have you seen them posting screenshots? If you're here and you do that business, by the way, nothing, we are, it's just that I don't get it, so I'm trying to use it as an example, as a summon example, yeah? Don't feel attacked. Just, just keep doing it, you know? Um, I think. Uh, <laughs> so I, I don't get it, so I can't recommend what I don't get. What I get is this thing that I'm preaching about, okay? Okay, so they post the screenshots of how much money they have in their wallet. Have you seen it? In that, in that cryptic wallet. They're just like, ha, huh, these are Dora's. There's so many dollars. Okay, like, ah. So you ask them, how does this work? Ay, I'm a kunasa. That is how we spread Jesus Christ with our lives. So God has made sure that he has taken this treasure, just trying to recap from last Sunday, taken this treasure and placed it in jars of clay. Who are the jars of clay? You and I. Bwana sifiwe. Tumewe kwa hapo, yeni ii treasure imewekwa ndani ya watu ordinary. God did not pick angels. He did not look for the most perfect of us. In fact, he opened the door so wide open, he removed it. There's this story um, in Judges about Samson when he went into the city and he akangoa the gates of the city akaenda nazo. Have you read that? That's what Jesus Christ did with his sacrifice at Calvary. He came and where there was a door that separated us from the Father, he came and he ngoaed it. Took it all the way up to Calvary. So now where there once stood a door, there is now an open, gaping entrance. 
that at any point, should you decide to come in, you can always come into the Father. Buona sifiwe. So anybody, if anybody believes, they can come to Jesus. That's what the Bible says, John 3.16, that God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoso, tell your neighbor, whosoever, whosoever is whosoever, the thief, the young one, the old person, the harlot, the priest, the pastor, the president, the pauper, whosoever, the doctor, the cobbler, the pupil, the professor, whosoever believes in him, at whatever point they believe, that moment they become children of God. Hallelujah. So the door has been left wide open. God has decided it is in people such as you and I that he will place this treasure. Now, lest we forget, and that's why we stopped last Sunday, that we, lest we get it twisted, the treasure is not your gifts. The treasure is not your skills. Those are what guys in computer call, are they called plugins or add-ons? Those ones. Vitus are enhance. These are the enhancers. And what they enhance is not the treasure. They enhance the vessel. Okay. Let me put it this way. If you see um, earthware, earthware, like nyungu, nyungu tu ya kawaida, chungu tu, nyungu. It's just a nyungu, imekwa tu hapo, it's just like, ah, it's just, you know, it's just a pot. But then they take it, and they do it, it is now chinaware. Wanaichukua, wanaitengeneza hivi, wanaichora, wanaipolish, wanaifanya sijui nini, wanaichora tena, Alafu wanayekelea mahali. What would have gone for like a hundred bob, now is going for like a hundred thousand. You're just like, ah! Si mchanga tu ya kahida. Matope tu. Kenyo wamefanya ni that wameyeka value addition. Somebody has sat with it and put their skill, put their gift on it. They have ome embellish. Those are what we are calling add-ons. So your gifts and your skills, and your knowledge, and your abilities, those are things that God has given to you, the vessel, but they do not give the treasure value. We said the value of the treasure is intrinsic. It is in itself. The treasure is the light of the gospel that we carry. That one, wherever it is, when you put it in a man, it gives the vessel value. When you take it out of the man, of the vessel, then the vessel is valueless. The Christian has value because of the treasure that is inside of them. That God in you, that is what makes you valuable. That's what causes you to be invited around tables. That's what causes people to want to be your friend. Because of this light on the inside of you that you carry. That's the beauty of the gospel. So he says we have this treasure, and that's why we said it's unlikely treasure. We have this treasure... On the inside of us, earthen vessels, so that when people look at you, they will never get it twisted that the excellence of the power is of God and not of us. Remember the example we finished with in Luke chapter 19, the story of the cult that carried Jesus at the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And it would be a foolish punda, it would be a foolish cult if the next day after the people have cried out Hosanna, Hosanna to Jesus and they have put down their garments and the palms and whatever, if the next day the punda went to the friends, the fellow pundas and would just be like Muliniona Jana. Did you guys see how guys were just crying out to me, Hosanna, super celeb status, you know, high priority. Did you see? Did you see me? Because it would be foolish to think that all that was for the vessel. But it was for the cargo, the treasure that it was bearing, Jesus Christ. So, as you realize that the thing that gives you value is what you carry, it is just so that God has made it intentionally that way, that it is you and I that are carrying that thing, and not some angelic being, so that other people might look around and see what a believer looks like in this day and age. Bona sifiwe. It says, we are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. We are struck down, but not destroyed. The treasure, you see, we said it is, it is, we are used to a system where the treasure is the one that protects the content. Where the, the vessel is the one that protects the content. But then God introduces us to this kingdom mystery where the 
content is protecting the vessel. That what is on the inside, the light of God is what keeps you going. It is the hope of, of God inside of you. Christ in us, the hope of glory that keeps you going. When you continue going towards the end of that chapter, in verse 16, when he says that therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is wasting away, yet on the inside the man is being renewed day by day. In Swahili it says, Iwapo nje tunachaka, ndanietu tunafanywa upia. That treasure on the inside is preserving the vessel. It causes you to wake up and even though things are not right, you remember what you carry on the inside of us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. You wake up in the morning and you're like, ah, listen, children, I write to you these things just so that you can be reminded that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You remember that and you get strength to push on. You might be unwell, sick, on the hospital bed, because we talked about the doctrine of suffering. Sometimes, just because we go through hard times does not mean that God does not care about us or love us. We will go through hard times. And it would be sad for us to look for the nearest exit every time um, difficulty comes. Because James says in 1, and is it verse 2? He says, count it all joy, brethren, when you go through all kinds of trials and tribu tribulations. Why? How is it possible to count it all joy? I am going through difficulty. Now, James is not saying that the trials and the tribulations will be coated with sugar. Not at all. He says the reason you can count it all joy is because you know God is not a sinister being seated in heaven just enjoying the show of his children suffering. No, when you go through these things, it is because he's working at something. We're having this conversation with my sister yesterday and saying nobody goes to the, nobody gets muscle and builds muscle and gets fit and healthy by sitting in the house and eating junk. You have to go to the gym. Now, you would be, it would be a thing of weirdness if you went into the gym and you, upon entering, you find somebody just screaming at the machines and screaming at the deadlifts and saying to them, I cancel you. I rebuke you. You shall not be heavy upon me. I receive new muscles now. It would be crazy. But when you look at your own Christian life and the tribulations have come, we are like, listen to me, tribulation. I shall not go through it. Just sit back and you're like, God, remove these tribulations. That's not what I ordered. Mm -mm. That's not what I want. The tribulations will come. And James says, count it all joy because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. It makes you strong on the inside. So that you may be able to withstand all the wiles and strategies of the devil. Because in that same chapter, we, you, we see that there's, there's a strategy of the enemy, the devil, who will blind, the God of this age, who will blind our eyes. Yesterday, in the leaders meeting in the morning, Pastor Alice reminded us, and she said, if only your eyes would be opened to see how much the devil hates you. Uangalie tu ufunguliwe macho, uone vinyana kuchukia uwewe. Akipata opportunity if you were, haneza kuwa. I laughed so hard in the morning because I have never thought about it like that. I was just like, I know the devil doesn't like me, and I know he hates me, but to think, akipata kachan sivi, wewe, ni kukuwa. So if you're alive, it's because the hand of God is really fighting for you. I pray that your eyes will be opened, that that veil will be removed, that you will stop thinking, this Christian, is, this Christian thing is just another thing. It's just another way to the Father. It's just, you know, there are many ways to God. Like, this is the one I've chosen, but I know there are like other ways out there. In your me more, in your shortcut. No, no, no. It's the only way. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. And then he says, no one can go to the Father except through me. In Dionjia to Unajaribu pale unapata kumefungwa. Unajaribu pale akuna. All of them are dead ends. The only way to God is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So that's, that's pretty much it. The vessel is carrying this treasure and God has made it that way on purpose. So the vessel is no more highlighted. The vessel is just what God is using to make sure other people get to hear and see what treasure actually looks like. I don't know whether you've seen those movies or those clips where um, there is 
diamond and that diamond is so pricely and so precious, Sijui ornaments or like the crown of the queen with all these embellishments and so on and so forth. And it has been kept somewhere in a viewing museum and it is not protected by a casing of diamonds. Have you seen that? It is protected by glass. It could be bulletproof glass and a Sijui laser and a what, but it's not diamonds. Nobody comes to see that glass. Everybody comes to see what? What is inside. But you see, you would be mistaken to think, Ile glass niki pata ni ibe tu. Ile. Ile. Imagine how to water wamekucha kuona i glass. No, your eyes are being blinded to think that it is the vessel. That is just the vessel being used to protect this thing. It is exactly what would happen to any of us who would think, hmm, and you see, that's the foolishness of the enemy as well, because when he comes after you and I, it is to think that if I can just finish this one, I have finished the gospel. And he has tried it throughout the ages. But you see, the treasure cannot be destroyed. The light of the gospel cannot be destroyed. The only way it can be hampered and its movement can be hampered is if you and I give in to that lie of the devil and our eyes being veiled, instead of seeing what we carry, we see ourselves as, I'm just an ordinary vessel. It is true, but God has decided it is you that he desires to carry that, vessel, that treasure. And so what would happen if you gave in to that lie, beloved, is that you would stop living out your Christian life. You would stop acknowledging what God has done. You would stop living the way you're supposed to be living and other people would therefore not see it. You see, if you go back to the story of the fall of man in Genesis chapter 3, what happens is that the serpent comes and speaks to the lady and Eve. <laughs> and when he speaks to Eve, Eve you know, decides, I'm, I'm going to eat it. She looks at it and she's like, huh? It looks like it's good for food. It's pretty, pretty little fruit. Eats it, takes it to her husband, Adam. Adam eats the fruit as well. And immediately their eyes are opened and they are ridiculous. They are naked. They make for themselves makeshift clothes out of these things. And, you know, and God in his mercy comes. And I love that God does not come in the morning at five, the way our principles used to come. Like God was not in, he was not hasty. He was not coming in a haste to come and punish them. Did you notice that? And he did not come in the heat of the afternoon with wrath. You know, in the afternoon when it is so hot, you just you are just naturally angry. Just like no, he comes in the evening, in the eventide. That says something to me about God. That even though man had already fallen, God is still looking to be kind and gracious to that to, to them. So when, when the message comes, um, when, when the Lord is delivering the judgment to them, he asks Adam because he's the one who was given the instruction and Adam was like, um, it's this woman that you gave me, woman, why did you do that? And then Eve is like, it's that serpent. You realize God did not go to us the serpent. Because that's what he does. The serpent, that's what he does. He's an opposer. He's the deceiver and the accuser of brethren. God had no, he just delivered punishment upon him. You see, God set this enmity between the seed of the woman and the serpent. So it is whoever sees the other one first. Did you notice that? In Genesis chapter 3, whoever sees the other one first, he says, you, you shall strike his heel. And you, you shall strike his head. Even in that punishment, God makes sure that he gives the believer an advantage. Because the nini will strike the hill, it will slow you down, it will not necessarily take you out. But you strike his head, he's out. You must see God's mercy throughout creation, throughout the scriptures. Now, the enemy, what he does then, is that he takes the God of this age, blinds us from seeing his operations in our life. So that you don't see him fast, he will see you fast. When he sees you fast, what does he do? He will hamper you, he will strike your heel. For sure he will strike your heel. He will hit at your education, he will hit at your family, he will hit at you with addiction, he will hit at you, and it will always look like it's not so bad. He will keep doing it. 
What is he doing? He's making sure if he can put, if he can keep this veil over your eyes for just a little bit longer, he will finish you little by little. Small, small poison. Small, small. Akudungi na poison ukufe. Kufa wewe. No. Anakudunga tu kidogo tu. Kidogo tu. Unaendelea kusurvive. Nasikia, I'm feeling a bit lightheaded. Then tomorrow, tomorrow, accumulated over time, you, your life is over. So the prayer that you and I must make in a few moments, beloved, and every day is that God, open my eyes. Remove the veil from my eyes that I might see the devil at work and operational in my life, in my family, in my generation. Because if you see him first, there is no mercy. You strike his head. The devil is not your friend. Hallelujah. He says, scripture says in First Peter chapter 5, verse 8, do be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is walking around looking for someone to devour. You must be sober. You must be vigilant. You must be active. You must be ready at every time. Your eyes must be open to see him for who he is. That filthy old serpent. I have never seen somebody spot a serpent or spot a snake somewhere. I was like, Oyo ni nyoka. And then you go about your business. No, no, no. It becomes first priority because that enmity has been placed there by God. But you see, another advantage that God gives to us is that he reveals to us the lie of the enemy. Again, you have the upper hand. Always, you have the revelation of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is able to show you, checky, 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 checky. This is where he is. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So everywhere you see him stealing you from, you, you can be able to catch him. Ah, I think the thief is around. That's what he's doing. Hey, offense is starting to creep into your heart. He's deceiving you. The moment you start to notice those things, you're like, yeah. I just get too stuck in Kuwombat and I feel too disappointed. Ah, he's taking you away from that thing that gives you power and strength. The more you don't do it, the more you get weaker and weaker and weaker. I pray that the eyes of your understanding will be flooded with light. Because we have this treasure in earthen vessels, you must acknowledge God's incomparable power. It's not your own. Because when you acknowledge God's incomparable power, you depend on it. You will give into it. If you don't, what you don't acknowledge, we are told many times that the anointing you don't honor cannot benefit you. If you do not acknowledge God's power in your life, God's hand of help, you're never going to truly depend on it. Bonasifiwe. So the first thing is that you must acknowledge God's incomparable power. God has made sure that this treasure is in earthen vessels so that you may see the excellence of the power is of God and not of us. You must acknowledge God's power. The second thing you and I must do is to bear the death of Jesus daily. That's verse 10. And finally it says, always, 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 if the Bible is yours, underline, highlight, circle it, always, carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Always, day and night, you cannot be a part-time believer. You cannot be a part-time vessel bearing precious treasure. You cannot. At every time, your alarms must be on. You must be sober. You must be vigilant. At all times, always, someone said that a part-time believer cannot defeat a full-time devil. You must always, always be on. Day and night, as long as we live, we must keep dying. What does it say? Always carrying about the body of, in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. That his life also may be made manifested in our body. So every day you wake up, it's a decision that today I am going to carry upon myself, to carry within myself the dying of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? You carry his sacrifice. You carry the reality of Calvary. You carry the truth of what he has done for you. The dying of Jesus Christ must be present in your mind. In your, you carry it with you. It is constant cargo. You know that thing that you never leave out, you never forget anywhere? Those things, if it's your wallet for some people, if it's your sanitizer for other people, 
your ID card, whatever it is, that thing that you never leave behind. For some of you, it's your phone. That thing that if you go a few paces and you realize you've left it, you had better go back to the house. That is what the death of Jesus Christ must be to every one of us. If you're going to be victorious at this job of bearing unlikely treasure, you must carry about in your body, you must bear the death of Jesus Christ. Always, always, day and night, forever, as we live, we die, so we live. As you live, you die, so you live. That our living is brought about by carrying the death of Jesus Christ and its significance to us. Galatians 2.20 would say, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I am now living, the life that, the life that you also should be living, in the flesh, you live by faith in the Son of God who loved you and gave himself for you. Unlikely treasure. Come on, Bona Sifiwe. It is unlikely for those two reasons. That number one, it is unlikely for the simple fact that it has been placed in earthen vessels. It doesn't look like treasure. Mwayenda ku tafuta nini kwa African homes I know all of you relate to this naenda kwa fridge unaona mkebe ya ice cream unajua oh lord today is christmas unafungua hivi unapata uji This is like what You've been deceived You've been deceived by this nini by the vessel But then if you were to flip it the other way round Unaenda unapata mkebe mkebe tu yenye iko hapo tu yenye ni tu ni mkebe tu ya mafuta ya kimbo au matili Unaangalia hivi unaipita tu unaipita alafu unaona mtu amekuja ametoka jikoni amekuja ameketi hapo na kuku anakula unamza umetoa kuku wapi Nisi kwa hapo kwa hii mkebe hiyo mkebe ya mafuta umekufa njaa hizi siku zote hujojua kuna chakula kwa nyumba it's the same so on both sides Sometimes you might ignore the vessel because you do not know, you don't know what it's carrying. You, you might just discount people. You look at somebody and they're thinking, oh, to ordinary man, ordinary young lady. No, if they are a believer, my friend, they are bearing precious treasure on the inside of them. You cannot cancel out people. But then now for yourself, you must be very careful that you do not allow the devil to use you to discount yourself just because you're a human being. Because God has made it, unlike, made it unlikely treasure on purpose. He has put it in this jars of clay. And you take a minute and just lift up your voice and ask God, God, open my eyes. Open my eyes and give me that advantage over the enemy that I would be able to see him at work in my life, trying to just blind me from seeing the treasure that I carry. Trying to keep me from, from experiencing the weight of the treasure that I carry so that I may water down what I am carrying or so that I may just cancel myself out just thinking I am, I am a normal, ordinary person. Yet God has made it that way on purpose. God could use absolutely anyone he would have decided to use angels, but he decided, no, I'm going to use ordinary people, human beings, just like you and me. He decided, it was his choice. He was not out of options. He would have created another generation of unfallen men and women. But he decided he's going to use these ones, redeemed people who have accepted Jesus, people who have a past, people who have a history. These people, vilest, vile, vile offenders, he decided, vile offenders who believe, he decided, I'm going to give them a second chance. And when they come in, what I'm going to do is that I'm not only going to forgive them, I'm going to make them my children, my sons and my daughters. It would have been enough if God has just forgiven us of our sins. But no, he went the extra mile and decided, no, no, I'm going to actually make them heirs. I'm going to make them my children. I'm going to make them my sons and daughters. So this word comes to you that might be seated there and for a long time you know you are a believer but you have been cancelling yourself out. You have, been, you have been looking at yourself and remembering your past and you're thinking, ah, there's nothing that God has to do with me. 
that message comes to you, beloved, don't allow the enemy to veil your eyes from seeing God's treasure. As you continue to pray for yourself, you, you are in this place and you are struggling with just forgiving yourself. You're a believer. You've given your life to Jesus. You know your sins are forgiven by God. But you feel like hanging on to your, to your misdeeds and your mistakes of the past. You feel like that puts a bit more value. You feel like it's a good thing you're doing. It's not. You're discounting what Jesus Christ did for you on Calvary. He has already said you are forgiven. When you believed in him, he already said you are forgiven forever. The day you gave your life to him, all your sins were wiped clean. And so the, the higher court has already spoken and said you have been freed forever. You hanging on to it does not give value to whatever it is that you're hanging on to. You're punishing yourself and that is a lie of the enemy because he keeps you. That is a way of the enemy bruising your heel. He is hampering the movement of the gospel. He is hampering you from living out the life that you're supposed to be living out in Jesus. I want to invite you to just receive the forgiveness of Jesus Christ in full. Whatever God has said, your opinion does not count. If you have said you're forgiven, you just get on board with him. You might not feel like it, but get on board with him. It is by faith, by faith, by faith. The life that we live in Jesus Christ, we live by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. So Father, I thank you for every person that is in that category that we've spoken about. People who are looking back at their lives and because of the things they have done, because of their lives that they have led before, they think that this, this, they cannot be effective ministers. They cannot be effective believers. They cannot be effective carriers of this treasure that you've given to us. This unlikely treasure. I pray for them. I pray that their eyes would be opened this morning. That they would see that that is just one of the ways of the enemy blinding us. In doing that, he is striking our heel and hampering our movement of the gospel. That we are not being effective carriers of this treasure to the places you're sending us out. And I pray that, dear God, by that opening of the eyes, that we will come back and accept your fullness of forgiveness. The fullness of your forgiveness in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, I pray for someone who hasn't given their lives to you yet. I pray that, Lord, you would reach such a person right now and that by the conviction of your Holy Spirit, you would pull them closer and closer still that they would not leave this service without that, making that precious decision that they too would be carriers of this treasure, the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you. Keep our eyes open, O oh God, today. In Jesus' name.